I am very happy to be here today to talk with you about a very serious subject. I invite you to go on a journey with me. We'll be going to Vietnam. We'll be going to some places deep in the heart, some dark places, some academic places, some intriguing places, and then to possibility and hope. So come along. Last December, I was in Vietnam with a group of fellow veterans on a journey of healing and reconciliation. There I learned about a very important concept, moral injury. I learned about one pathway to healing this injury, and I discovered that I had incurred a moral injury during my service in the Vietnam War. I'm sharing this with you today for two reasons to help expand our understanding of the challenges that many veterans experience as they return home from war, and to help fellow veterans who may be experiencing moral injury to see it, to understand it, and to find some of the peace and the healing that I'm finding as I tend this wound. When I was with my fellow veterans in, in Vietnam, we were walking in the district of Cu Chi. When we encountered Madame Ki, she was sweeping her courtyard. She welcomed us into her home. We sat at her dining room table and in front of her family altar, and she shared some of her story with us. Her brother had been killed in a napalm attack during the war. I said, I feel bad about what we did in your country. And Madame Key said, don't feel that way. You were just doing what you were told to do. I had a surprisingly intense emotional response to Madame Key's forgiveness. Tears of joy and grief and relief welled up frequently during the rest of the journey. And at times, I, tears still well up when, when I speak of Madame Key's forgiveness. Those tears were my clue that I had incurred a moral injury. But I didn't realize that at that time, and my emotions didn't make sense to me. Let me tell you why. I was in social work school in 1969 when I received my draft notice. I believed that the war was morally wrong. And I applied for conscientious objector status because I did not want blood on my hands for killing in a war that I felt was morally wrong. I served as a combat medic with the 101st Airborne Division in the last major battle of the Vietnam War. After I left a combat role, I provided medical care in the local villages. So here's what puzzled me. I carried no weapon. I killed no one. I helped my fellow soldiers, and I helped the local villages. So what was the source of my moral injury and guilt? As I have discovered, I, I was morally injured when I was compelled to witness and to support killing in a war that I felt was morally wrong. And what was the source of my intense emotional response to Madame Key's forgiveness? When Madame Key said, don't feel that way, you were just doing what you were told to do, she was directly acknowledging my moral injury and guilt, and she was doing so with care and kindness. Madame Key was demonstrating the Vietnamese community approach to addressing veteran trauma. Brett Litz is a psychologist with the United States Department of Veterans Affairs, the VA. 
Brett describes the causes of moral injury this way. It's perpetrating, failing to prevent, bearing witness to, or learning about acts that transgress deeply held moral beliefs and expectations. Dr. Jonathan Shea also indicates that moral injury can result from betrayal of what's right by someone who holds legitimate authority in a high stakes situation. But one soldier described the source of his moral injury very simply. It's when the head says to do what the heart says is wrong. David Wood is author of What We Have Done, The Moral Injury of Our Longest Wars. David describes the story of moral injury in Afghanistan. A young Marine was in a bad firefight. There were casualties on both sides, Marines and Taliban. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw a figure spraying bullets from an assault rifle. When he got the figure in his sights, he saw that it was a boy, 12 or 13. He took aim and fired. According to military rules of engagement, it was a justifiable kill. He was accomplishing his mission. He was protecting his fellow Marines and he was protecting himself. But when the young Marine returned home to civilian life, he found that he had a bruise on his soul, a painful violation of, of the civilian rules of right and wrong. Since 1980, Post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, has been the major tool that we have used to understand the impact of battle trauma on veterans. The specific term moral injury first appeared in a research article in 2009, and it appeared there because there are problems that PTSD cannot address. It can't explain these, these problems. Dr. Jonathan Shea is a psychiatrist who s devoted his career to serving veterans in the VA who were diagnosed with PTSD. Dr. Jonathan Shea describes powerfully and simply why it is so crucial for us to look at moral injury. And I'll get to that later, but right now I'm going to talk to you about the experience of moral injury. The VA describes the experience of moral injury this way. Highly aversive and haunting states of inner conflict and turmoil. Shame, guilt, anxiety, anger, alienation. Withdrawal and self-condemnation, alcohol or drug use, emotional numbing, underemployment or unemployment, failed or harmed relationships, and self-harming, including suicide. Research shows that there's a direct link between moral injury and suicide because guilt is a major trigger for suicide. So this is quite a list, and I, I think you can see by looking at this list why it is so crucial for us to give moral injury close scrutiny. So as I said, in, since 1980, PTSD has been the, the major tool that, that we've utilized, and moral injury appeared in 2009 because it's Fit, filled in the gaps where there were problems that PTSD cannot explain. So Dr. Jonathan Shea describes very simply why it's so crucial for us to look at moral injury. PTSD is rarely what wrecks veterans' lives or crushes them to suicide. Moral injury does both. I discovered some intriguing information while I was in Vietnam, and I want to share this with you because I think it can help us as we seek to 
to help our veterans with moral injury. The Vietnamese experienced staggering levels of death, destruction, and privation during what they call the American War. For example, three million Vietnamese died versus 58,000 Americans. But despite this great disparity in levels of trauma, Dr. Lee Van Hao of the Institute of Psychology in Hanoi states that the chronic and comprehensive breakdown often seen among American veterans is absent among Vietnamese veterans. Dr. Lee describes protective factors in Vietnam that affect the way the Vietnamese responded to the war. Let's take a look at one of these protective factors. Vietnamese communities have a different relationship with their veterans than we do here in the U.S. In the U.S., veterans often feel that they must bear the burden of their invisible wounds on their own. And they feel reluctant to share their stories in a civilian community. Dr. Ed Tick is author of Warriors, Re Warriors Return, Restoring the Soul After War. Dr. Tick describes the relationship of Vietnamese communities to their veterans. In Vietnam, communities have been traditionally witnessing their warrior stories, and they've been doing it in homes and pagodas and community centers. They've been doing this on a spontaneous basis for hundreds of years. Vietnamese communities feel that the stories soldiers, the story soldier stories feel that they feel that they are, belong to the community as a whole and that they, share, they have the responsibility to carry these stories in their hearts. Vietnamese communities feel a shared responsibility for the decision to go to war. So, how can we apply this in the U.S.? First, Moral injury is not a medical diagnosis. This is a wound that's in the moral, spiritual, and social arenas. Therefore, medical care might be helpful at times, but in order, order to truly address this wound, holistic care is required. Dr. Ed Tick describes the components of holistic care. It addresses mind, body, heart, and spirit in community, guided with transcendent meaning. There are places in the VA where such holistic care is being provided, and in addition to the work of these skilled professionals, the involvement of the community is required in order to complete holistic care. Let me, let me describe one approach to involving our communities with our veterans. There are community listening circles where veterans and civilians can gather in a small group where veterans can share their stories as a part of their healing. There's several requirements for such a circle. First, a group of veterans who are willing to share their stories in a civilian circle. And a group of Civilians who are trained and committed to this work, who are willing to listen to difficult stories with open, compassionate, and with strong hearts. They need to be willing to own their part of the responsibility for sending the soldiers to war. And in order to truly honor these life and death stories, a sacred space is required. It's a sacred space, not a religious space. So what are the consequences if we do not take action to expand our understanding of moral injury and how to tend this wound? Recent research shows that 25% of veterans who are at risk for moral injury upon returning home from war so if we take that 25% and we look at veterans who served in Vietnam, 
Iraq, Afghanistan, I calculate that at least 1.2 million veterans are at risk for moral injury. If we do not take action to expand our understanding of the injury and, and how to address it, 1.2 million veterans may not receive the help that they need to, to deal with this crushing and life-threatening wound. So how can we as a community gather together to address this problem? I have some recommendations. We can support public dialogue like we're doing today to heighten awareness of moral injury. Support research to increase our understanding of this injury. And support community-based and holistic programs for our veterans. More specifically, you can find one of these community listening circles and participate. If there's not one in your area, I suggest that you seek out guidance and support if you're interested in creating such a circle. I invite our communities to follow the example of Madame Key, to acknowledge moral injury in community and to do so with care and with kindness. And finally, have you ever felt awkward or uncomfortable in the presence of a veteran? I have. Some of us veterans can have a pretty rough exterior. If you find yourself feeling awkward or uncomfortable in the presence of a veteran, consider this. The person in front of you may be experiencing moral injury, and that fact guarantees that you're standing in the presence of a kind, compassionate heart. Thank you.